Hello, I'm Siying from Facebook. Key value is a powerful interface. Maybe that's why there are so many known key value libraries. However, few people have introduced thoughts on requirements to a good key value store for performance, usability, failure handling, and limits to the interface. Our paper summarizes the experience we learned through eight years of RocksDB development. I will first talk about the design goals of RocksDB, and then I will cover two topics in the paper. The changing of the resource optimization targets and integrity checking. First, what did we build RocksDB for? RocksDB is a persistent key value store library. It uh, stores data in persistent storage and the users query the data through C++ function. We design RocksDB for modern hardware, SSDs, multi-core CPUs, and serve high read and write throughput. We also hope it can be tuned to serve a wide range of applications. We achieve the goal. Today, RocksDB is used by databases, index servers, messaging queue and logging, log, caching, and many other applications. Finally, we focus on single node and don't handle inter-host operations. We forked from level DB in 2012 and open source in 2013 and started to serve serious use cases by that time. Over the years, we have improved the performance and added features. Some serious database services adopt RocksDB storage engine in production in 2015 and 2016. RocksDB's performance optimization targets did change over time. Initially, the major goal was to reduce write amplification. SSDs have limited erase cycles, so reducing writes can help the devices to endure. Different layers can introduce write amplifications. While some people focus on the internal amplifications of SSDs or the OS layer, we determine that it is the storage engine layer that introduced the most significant write amplification. So we focus on that layer, which did end up with a correct decision. That's why we picked the lock structure tree as the main data structure. Lock structure merge tree can provide good write amplification for most use cases. However, soon we learned that most Rust users aren't bottlenecked by ERI cycles or IOPS, but they demand more data to be stored on the drive, or in other word, or in other word, space efficiency. We sampled some different applications in the database services and found that the majority of the services are not bottlenecked by flash endurance, IOPS, or CPU, but space utilization. The good news is that we found lock switch tree is also friendly to space efficiency, as long as we can control the compaction so that the dead data can be removed from the system timely. And it's exactly something we optimized for. Later, we realized that reducing CPU became more important. Although space might be the bottleneck, some users have the flexibility to choose the hardware they run on. They can move the bottleneck to CPU by putting more SSDs to the host. Furthermore, over the years, SSD became relatively cheaper compared to CPUs. So it is even more important to focus on CPU saving. Further going down this route, we realized that it's time to focus on disaggregated storage. Going back to previous example, optimizing CPU or SSD can help, but it's hard to make the two balance. Users usually need to waste either CPU or storage, unless these two can be provisioned separately. That's exactly disaggregated storage can do. 
think about running RockDB on HDFS. By having compute and storage, by having by having compute and storage separated, we can provision these two separately and both reach high utilization. The solution faced the challenge of network bandwidth. When networks got faster over the years and it became attractive to more and more applications. So that's why we started to focus on this since about two years ago. We are working on improving performance, failure handling, and toolings for this setup. We also started to work on features that are only possible with this aggregate storage, like tier storage, local cache, secondary instances, remote compactions, and so on. To recap the lessons we learned on performance optimization, we initially focused on write amplification, but later added space efficiency, CPU overheads, and disaggregated storage as additional targets over the time. Next area I will cover is integrity checking. Let's start with how users use RocksDB. Most RocksDB users replicate their data to multiple hosts. When, when a replica needs to be built for various reasons, users often physically copy the RocksDB files. Usually, one host runs multiple DB instances, so if one host fails, the load of rebuilding new replicas can be spread over many hosts. Some users back up the data through copying RocksDB files too. You can read our paper for lessons we learn on large scale systems. And now let's focus on integrity errors. RocksDB inherited block checksum from LevelDB. As most other systems, when RocksDB writes any data, the checksum is attached with the data block. When we read back any block, we check the checksum to detect corruption by the storage media. This is basic, but we have learned that this protection might not be enough. We learned that eventually avoiding corrupted blocks is to be served to users is not enough, and users demand them to be caught earlier. We know that single host is not expected to be reliable. A local DB corruption will be handled by dropping this replica and building a new one. However, if the data is corrupted and is not detected timely, the chance that all the replicas are corrupted increases and we risk for data loss. Another danger is when the data is copied. If the corrupted blocks are not checked, the corrupted data can be spread to all the replicas and cause data loss. In this case, the replica is copied for load balancing and copied again. In the end, all the replicas are corrupted. One feature we added to help users is full file checksum, which is stored in the metadata in the DB. When users stream the files to another host, they can check the checksum during the streaming and reject the file if it, it is corrupted. The same full file checksum can protect backup restore process too. Another lesson we learned is that CPU corruption does happen and it will create trouble for users who operate their services. This is because CPU BitWeb can corrupt the data and can be detected by any checksum. The silent corruption can pollute all the copies and cause permanent corruption. In many cases, the corruption is not even detectable. For those detected, people usually need to spend efforts to rule out a software bug and the effort is wasted. Sometimes it's even hard to track where did the corruption happen. A key value checksum might provide some coverage to this and help users to identify where the corruption happened. Finally, even if both of RocksDB and some storage systems provide checksums, when RocksDB hand a buffer to the storage system, they a bit flip might happen. 
a hand up checksum can help protect this case. To recap the lessons we learned on integrity checking, detecting RocksDB corruption earlier can help prevent permanent data loss. Full file checksum can help. To mitigate the trouble of CPU bit flip, key value checksum and hand up checksum can help. We introduced many more lessons in our paper. And if you are interested, please go ahead and read them. Thank you. And I will be happy to take your questions.